Hi, thanks for joining us on the bridge today. I was wondering if you've ever done something good and then got criticized for it? Sure. It happens, doesn't it? Sometimes we do that and we do something that's good for one or more people or about a situation. And then you receive a whole bunch of criticism because people don't know and don't understand. They don't see the backstory. They're only judging from their eyes. And there's a lot more involved in decisions and helping people. We are gonna talk about that today because that happens every day. It happens years ago and it happened back in the Bible, believe it or not, right. that criticism was done for doing good. And we're gonna look at that today in Mark chapter three. Join us and stay with us through the entire season of this Mark Gospel. Hi, and welcome to The Bridge. My name is Pastor Randy Jones. This is my wife, Nancy. And we're a small part of a big thing that we believe God's doing. And he's called us into ministry to take this good news of Jesus around the world. Uh, we have a pastor's conference coming up on the 30th. I'll be speaking at outreach service this Friday. Uh, the college and ministry is underway. And we're just excited what the Lord is doing. Uh, we're uh, gaining resources to release another family. If you'd like to be a part of that, be led of the Holy Spirit. That's what we are trying to do. We're all about being led by the Holy Spirit. And you're going to see how Jesus dealt with wokeness in just a few minutes. Way back then. And uh, the title of the message today uh, is A Plot to Kill. And just coming off this attempted assassination of uh, Trump, I think you'll glean some good insight, not from me, but from God's word. So stay with us and we want you to, to be a part of that. Nancy, tell us a little bit about ministry and I'll pray and then we're going to dive right into Mark chapter 3 in just a moment. Amen. Well, thank you for joining with us. We're in Iowa again. We've come and go through here whenever we go up to see our kids in the north part of the country and so it's a halfway point so we're we stop here and we rest and you can see in the background that trailer right there belongs to our good friends um, Mike and Barbara Segrist and as we are recording this right now we want to pray for her because Barbara mm -hmm. is in surgery as we speak it's true. and so we want to be praying for her about that by the time this is you're seeing this she's already come out and started her recovery process but um, so we want to pray for her about that and we are in um, an area called Adventureland and I don't know if you can see the Ferris wheels and roller coasters and all the tracks behind us once in a while you might hear it get started and some screams don't worry it's all under control it's just an amusement park and so we are enjoying that we had a great time with family over the fourth and a couple weeks in Illinois so we are just looking forward to new things that God has for the rest of the summer we are excited for people being released out of in slavery like Randy was referring to and the sewing center is going forward for um, enhancing women's skills a couple of new sewing machines yeah and... yeah thank you you helped us purchase that you helped us release one family this month already it would be great to be able to release another family from the slavery so whatever you can do to help us we thank you we appreciate you for doing that and we appreciate your constant prayers and and while we're traveling and while we're um, ministering and like Randy said uh, the leadership conference that he's going to be doing and just all kinds of things God is just keeping us busy in our retirement years <laughs> here we thought we were going to retire <laughs> God is good Amen. well let's pray together can we Heavenly Father we do join together and we pray for Barbara who's having surgery Lord let them to deal with this bone spur and let her to have a 100% recovery yes. in Jesus name yes. Uh, we pray for Joan Eberhardt, that she would just do well physically. Yes. We pray for Mark Garrett, Lord, that he would receive healing touch in his body. Uh, we pray, Lord, that you would just minister supernaturally to Larry, Lord, who's recovering nicely. Give him strength in his person, his body. Uh, we just uh, pray that you would just continue to touch all those that are going through challenges, Lord. Uh, Paul Friedrich, Lord, has he's... Uh, being challenged in his body and person. You are our healer. 
And we look unto you, the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. And we just trust you and know that you always do right and do well. We pray for marriages right now, Lord, that they would be strengthened, Lord. And yes. We ask that you would just bless those who are on vacation this summer to take time for each other as husband and wife, time with the kids. Uh, be with those who are traveling, Lord. Uh, be with those that are, are going to have family in with them in their own home. And just minister, Lord, and strengthen the body, Lord. Strengthen the family. Strengthen the church. Uh, strengthen America. We do thank you that you protected Trump from a would-be assassin. We thank you that you watch over and lead and guide. And we do pray for the executive branch of America as we choose a new president in November. We ask, Lord, that you would allow the right person to be elected into that strategic uh, area, Father. Uh, minister now, Lord. We pray for our Congress. Uh, we ask that you would be with Mike Johnson, the Speaker of the House. Uh, we pray that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, we pray for those seats that are going to be open. And we pray for good people to serve in those areas, Lord. And the Senate as well. We pray that we would see the Senate turn towards you. The judi judicial picks would be done right and, and godly constitutionalists would be placed in, in their place. And we ask, Lord, that you'd be with our military, be with the missionaries around the globe, Lord, especially be with the Assemblies of God that we are a part of. Thank you for the world missions that you entrusted into our care. Uh, we pray for the schools, the colleges, Help us, Lord, as we're preparing to be in Yuma uh, this winter. Uh, draw the right people into that uh, park and let us to continue to minister supernaturally to friends and family. We do ask, Lord, that you would just be with us all, Lord. Strengthen us now by your spirit. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. You say amen? Amen. All right, amen. 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 Okay, so the title of today's message is the plot to kill. We're in the third chapter of our series on the Gospel of Mark. So Nancy's going to read to you the first couple of verses and we're going to dive into the text. Okay. Another time Jesus went into the synagogue and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Some of them were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus. So they watched him closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath. So in the United States and perhaps even around the world, there has been a cancer that has set in and it's been going on for decades. It's an anti-God. In this whole arena of trying to be inclusive, which I, I understand that. I grew up in a community where there were lots of various uh, uh, people groups. But there's been the, this exclusion, maybe not intentionally done, but there's been an exclusion of others trying to include some. Now, how do we find balance in that, Nance? How do we find, you, you and I find balance in that? Uh, I'm often accused, I have a heritage of Irish, English, uh, I thought all of my life Indian, still trying to sort through that one uh, from my great-great-grandmother, Olga, that was a full-blooded Indian, perhaps uh, Cherokee or Shawnee. But just looking at all of that, I've never judged someone intentionally by the color of their skin. Uh, it doesn't matter if they're Italian or, or Asian. It doesn't matter if they're Hispanic or black or white or Indian. Because the song I grew up singing pretty regular as a kid, red, yellow, black, and white, Jesus loves them all. They're precious in his sight. I grew up singing that song in children's church, and perhaps some of you did as well. So I don't appreciate any leader, and we've had some pretty rotten leaders as president of the United States in times past that have just brought this, this whole racism and threw gas on it. Can we just calm it all down now and just let's let's be Americans. I am proud to be an American. Amen. And those of you that are in Pakistan, be proud that you're a Pakistani. If you're from India, be proud that you're from India. Uh, I'm proud that I have my wife. For me, she's the most beautiful woman in the world. And 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 that's and that's good for me to feel and think and and believe that. 
and I believe America is the best for me. This is where God allowed me to be born. And this whole thing of everybody just trying to take from somebody else, the Ten Commandments are being violated by governments. And uh, we shouldn't covet what somebody else has. I'm thankful for what God has helped us to acquire and worked hard for it. So as we look at this passage of scripture, what is your personal world view? In order to have a good world view, we have to filter everything with the scriptures. So I, I'm impacted by what's going on in the world, but I'm not led by that. I want to know what's going on. I want to have my head in the sand, but let's stay awake. But let's not let hatred or division cause us to, to go separate from one another. Or as we've seen in these last few decades of this cancer, a cancer against marriage. There's been a cancer against, well, we don't need to go to church. The Bible very clearly teaches that we need to be in church. What is all of the building of the temple in the Old Testament about? Jesus himself went to the synagogue regularly. Uh, we're instructed in the book of Hebrews. Barnabas is probably the writer or Paul. Not to forsake the assembling of yourselves together as some are in a habit of doing. This revival that has come now to America, you want to be in on it. And if you want to be in on it, the cutting edge is in the church. The cutting edge is in the body of Christ. Because it's there where we do missions. It's there where we raise our children in a godly way. It's there. And, and I, I look at our three grown children, their spouses, and our eight grandchildren. And, and I'm not patting myself on the back, but I, I want to thank God and thank the Holy Spirit. I want to thank Jesus for protecting them. And I want to thank all the Sunday school teachers and all the youth pastors and all the uh, pastors and leaders and the Assemblies of God that have, have provided schools and educations on a all the way into master's degrees. I want to be thankful for that, but you can't, I can't do that alone. And so don't be a, don't be a lone ranger. Be in the army of God. I've never served in the military, but I'm in the battle of a lifetime and that victory is already won through Christ. So they're trying to trap Jesus, just like they're trying to trap me by the things that I say, even on the internet. Uh, look, looking for reasons to accuse. Read the next section about how Jesus brings this man up and shows the world, and it's in the scripture, so millions, if not billions of people have read it because Jesus wanted us to know that he had power to heal. Okay. Nancy? Chapter, well, chapter 3, verses 3. Jesus said to the man with the shriveled hand, stand up in front of everyone then jesus asked him which is lawful on the sabbath to do good or to do evil to save a life or to kill but they remained silent he looked around at them in anger and deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts and said to the man stretch out your hand he stretched it out and his hand was completely restored then the Pharisees went out and began to plot with the Herodians how they might kill Jesus. So there was wokeness here. Mm -hmm. Jesus wanted to do good by healing a man's hand that was deformed, and he wanted to make it whole. He knew what they were up to. So he had the man stand up, and he wanted them all to see what he was going to do. You know, there's a parallel story that I want to recite to you if you haven't heard it. It's a story of a kingdom and of a great king and he had lots of subjects and he wore beautiful clothes all the time. But on this occasion, they pretended to put clothes on the king and got him ready for the parade, but there really weren't any clothes. And as he marched in the parade, oh, the people applauded the people were shouting, how beautiful, how beautiful is the garments, how beautiful. And the little boy looking said, there's no clothes. The emperor is naked. Oh, don't say that. Can we trust what we see today? And probably now with AI and technology, uh, there's a lot of crazy things that can happen. They can 
They can take my face and put it in the face or a body of someone else and, and you wouldn't hardly be able to tell the difference. So can we trust what we see? Well, not in the natural, but I believe you can trust what you see if you let your spirit be led by the Lord. Remember, he said, I'll never leave you nor per, or, or I'll never leave you nor forsake you, but I'll be with you to the very ends of the earth. He knew AI was going to come. And, and I feel bad for some of the young teenage girls and boys that they've put their face on a body that was similar to theirs, but there was no clothes and they've humiliated them. And some kids, because of that, have even, you know, felt bad or done drugs or taken fentanyl or even taken their own life. A lot of that bullying does go on. It's a real thing. But we need to be like that little boy and say the truth. Call things as they are with an innocent heart, not to be vindictive. And Jesus knew the hearts of the Pharisees and that they were going to try to trip him up and Jesus told the man stretch out your hand and the man had to take action stretch out his hand and the Lord made him whole Amen. Jesus you. wants to make you whole and if you have faith and if you trust him and believe in him see this is part of the cancer not believing that Jesus is coming back uh, people have bought into that the world is billions and billions and billions of years old and that we all have come from this little uh, gas and stigma that bumped into each other that created a cell. Why isn't that happening today? If we came from monkeys, why aren't we still coming from monkeys? That's not true. And even the cell structure of frogs and different things are more compl complicated than other cell structures. So I want to go with the written eyewitness account, and that's God. God did it all. He told Adam and Eve about it. They passed it on oral tradition. Moses wrote it down. So if you want to know how the world was created, ask somebody that was there. And he gave it to you in the word. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And then God began to create each day. And God's creating even now. He's allowing us to be creative. Think of the fact that this is going over the airwaves all around the world to many, many people to hear the gospel and to realize that these are truths and they were plotting to go against Jesus because he was trying to do something good. We're trying to do something good. We're trying to prepare the next generation. Nancy's going to read this next section, verse 7 through 12. And you can see what Jesus is doing here because his popularity is growing exponentially. And now that COVID is over, people are returning to the church, to the body of Christ, to missions, to outreach. Uh, there's a lot of great things that are happening, and you won't get it in the media, but if you'll go to the house of the Lord, you'll hear all about it. Nancy? Okay. Jesus withdrew with the disciple to the lake, and a large crowd from Galilee followed. When they heard about all he was doing, many people came to him from Judea, Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. I, um, in a near, I don't know what that word is and the regions across the Jordan and around Tyre and Sidon. Because of the crowd, he told the disciples to have a small boat ready for him to keep the people from crowding him, for he had healed many, so that those diseased were pushing towards, towards to touch him. Whenever the impure spirits saw him, they fell down before him right. and cried, You are the Son of God. And he gave them strict orders not to tell others about him. Jesus went up on the mountainside and called to him those he wanted, and they came to him. That town Nancy was having a hard time. It's called Udum Udumia. 
and it's a hard word I, I i get that and all of that whole area there jordan and as we as we look at tyre and sidon these were places where the truth is now flowing and jesus's popularity is increasing so much so that that people everybody wanted to touch him uh, i've had a few of those moments in india and in pakistan especially where there are throngs of people that want to get close to you and to have you pray for them or uh, speak a word of life to them. And uh, it, it is rather awesome to, to experience that. But I think you see Jesus's heart here. He just wanted to get in the boat. He wanted to teach them. He wanted to prepare them because he wanted to show them the path. The way to eternal life was given to us by Jesus Christ himself. He was born like we've been born. He was raised in a family. He went through difficulties. He had to work along with his father, who was a carpenter. In those days, carpenters did both stonework and they did woodwork as well. But he was trying to uh, teach and, and help others understand that. And I, I think that as we, as we look at this, Jesus does this supernatural miracle and he's becoming very popular and everybody wants to have a piece of him. Now, let's not elevate people, though, above Christ. I want to be real careful here. Um, large crowds can sometimes become a mob with wrong information. And Jesus it says here he healed so many people. And I just hope that you will realize that Jesus wants to heal you too. Now, how he does it instantly, progressively, today, tomorrow, a month from now, uh, through a surgery, uh, through a recovery, uh, through various things. Yeah, I'm sorry. Through medication. Medication, sure. There's various ways. Physician, heal thyself, the word says. And so we have a role. We have a part in that. And we are to be led of the Lord. And I just want you to see that that's what we are trying to do. And we want you to join with us because we're stronger together. Can you join with us and encourage people in your life by sharing this video with them? Can you encourage others by saying out loud, God is watching over America. God is watching over all the nations of the world. And God is working through the missions ministry. Now, most of my ministry full time has been supporting other missionaries. In the last five years, we have now uh, begun to go to foreign lands and going to foreign countries and not physically all the time, many times over the Internet. But God is using that tool to accomplish the discipleship and the work that needs to be done. And as I share with Nancy privately, and I'm going to share with you now, when we take these steps into these arena, we feel the buffeting of the enemy. And discouragement sometimes in the form of why or, or why are we doing this or distrusting. Just as these people were trying to distrust Jesus because he was doing something good on the Sabbath, sometimes they are wanting to cause people to, to distrust ministries, distrust the assemblies of God. Well, there are individuals that sometimes make a mistake, but the fellowship as a whole or the church body as a whole wants to do the right thing. And I know that we're coming off of several really well-known ministers that have had to give up their pulpit and that's okay. They need to get personal ministry themselves. And that brings about recovery. You don't hear about the 80 to 90% success rate of those who come to Christ, come under other leadership, get the counseling, support, biblical knowledge that they need to break habits, whatever they are, and to, and to defeat the enemy in the name of the Lord Jesus. I just want you to see that that really is happening. And that's where I play a little bit of a role maybe in your life you would sometimes be kind of like I was, never going to the foreign field. Well, we're doing this ministry. We also go to the foreign field and we hold accountable. 
we ask questions. We look at what's really happening, uh, not just what they're telling us in their newsletter or in their communications, but what is really transpiring? What happens to the believers once they accept Christ? What churches are they being involved in? How are they growing? And we're, we're attempting to address that through these layers of myself, key pastors, uh, support leaders, and we're providing opportunity. We see a need, and with your help and us together, we're fulfilling that. So I hope that you will, first of all, pray for us. That's the most important. Secondly, that you would encourage, and we get lots of encouragement and likes on our pages. And if you'll help spread this, that helps our ministry grow. It gives us impact, greater impact in, here in America. And we're doing some things strategically here in America to reach Americans and Canadians and, and people from Mexico and this continent. So the Bible says to go into all the world. Well, Jerusalem, Judea, and the uttermost parts of the world, we're aggressively doing that. We're fulfilling that. And we're inviting you to encourage us. And then as the Lord speaks to your heart, we would ask that you would join with us and making a commitment. If you want to do a one-time gift, but you know, the strength of the ministry really is the monthly support. People that give regular amount on a monthly basis, that gives us operating capital to be able to make commitments to these pastors' conferences, to these uh, outreaches. And some of these are huge. Some of these uh, outreaches that we're doing, these crusades are huge. And we have some really big ones planned for spring of 25 around Easter time next year. And I would like you to begin to pray about praying for us, encouraging us, uh, saying, yeah, I feel that too. That's what the Lord would have us do. And let's pray concerning that. And here's our part in this. And as you are led of the Lord, we're going to see these doors continue to stay open because we don't know how long that will be. We don't know if we have one more week, one more month, one more year. But until the Lord takes us home, until the rapture of the church, this gospel shall be preached Amen. to every nation, to every person. And we want you to be a part of that here now so that one day when we're all together in heaven, we can look at each other, hug each other and say, we did what the Lord asked us to do. Amen. Not more than what the Lord asked, but what did the Lord ask? Has he told Moses, Moses, what's in your hand? And Moses had a staff. And God used that staff many times to impact the culture, to change the direction of Egypt, to part the Red Sea, to provide for the children of Israel water, whatever. God doesn't ask for something that he doesn't provide. Let him provide for you. And then as you receive that, bless others with it. Amen. You agree today? Amen. Pray with me if you would as we close our time together today. Lord, we ask that those that have an infirmity in their hand or their leg or their body, that they would just present it to you and that you would heal that in the name of Jesus. Let healing virtue flow now according to your will, plan, and purpose. Glory to God. Glory to God. We come against the powers of the enemy. And we know that we have authority over Thank you, darkness. Thank you, Demonic spirits, be quiet. Yes. You will not destroy the Amen. church. You will not destroy the work of the Lord. As Jesus told you to be quiet, we tell you to be quiet as well. Until the mission is accomplished. Until the church is raptured. We ask for you to stop harassing people's bodies, finances, relationships. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining with us. We'll see you next time here on The Bridge, and we'll continue in Chapter 3 of the Gospel of Mark. God bless. See you next time on The Bridge. 
Thank you for joining us today on The Bridge. Please check out our website at www.thebridgeministry.online. Also, like us on your favorite social media platform. And if you're on YouTube, be sure and like and subscribe. Thank you and have a great week.